Have you ever been somewhere alone, but you didn't feel like you were truly alone? That feeling like someone or something was watching you? If you like the rush of goosebumps up and down your spine, then the following horror stories will definitely keep you up at night. And be sure to watch until the very end of this video for something truly horrifying. I'm on the run, running for my life. My friends and family probably think I'm dead by now. But I just had to come on here and warn everyone somehow. I'm horrified that there are others like me out there who are about to become a victim. For my own safety reasons, I cannot disclose too much information. I will say that I'm a woman in my 20s and I was living in Canada when my life was completely turned upside down. Again, I can't say where for safety reasons. Well, I suppose I should tell you guys what happened. I was uploading some photos to Instagram of a weekend trip with some friends. I even skipped the filters because everything was perfect. A caption and a couple of hashtags. Then I posted. Anyone that uses Instagram knows that you're bound to get one of those private messages telling you how beautiful your dog is or whatever, and that they would love for you to be an ambassador for their brand. So I was obviously anticipating just such a message. But when I checked in later, the message I had received was a little strange. It was this lady saying that she wanted to hire me as one of their nature photographers and to click on the link to check out their page. While I'm not terrible at taking pictures, I'm certainly no professional. I don't even own a real camera. I was curious though, so I clicked the link. A bunch of photos of mountains popped up, and they were stunning. Then I replied to her saying that although I was flattered, I just wasn't qualified. I had barely hit send when she replied. She didn't even have time to read my message, and as I started reading, my blood ran cold. It was all of my personal details. Banking, cell phone, home address, where I worked, who my family was, the color of my car, and even the name of my pets. Then pictures just started popping up in the chat. Photos of my childhood I had never shared. Then photos of my workplace, of my car, of my house, my pets and of me in that very moment while I was looking at the photos. The picture showed me sitting on my couch, looking at my phone in horror. I immediately looked to where the photo would have been taken and a large man with a mask was standing in the doorway. Before I even had a chance to scream, he sprang like an animal, I mean lightning fast, almost like someone hit the fast forward button on a movie and then he pounced on me and put his hand over my mouth. I must have switched into survival mode because I somehow got out from under him and managed to rip off the mask. He straightened up and in front of me stood a man, I think. His skin was absolutely white. His eyes were pale blue, like the glassy eyes of a dead fish floating in curdled milk. I'm honestly not sure it was even human. It started grinning, and I saw that each of his teeth had been filed into sharp fangs. In a low growl, he told me, Run. And I haven't stopped running yet. Even now, I feel like I'm being watched. I should go. I heard someone talking about something similar that had happened to them, so I thought that I should share my story and see if anyone else has been experiencing the same thing. If you know what I'm talking about, I know that it's horrifying. But at least you'll know that you're not alone. I'm 22 years old and I've been traveling through Louisiana. This happened about two days ago when I arrived in New Orleans and I visited the St. Louis Cemetery to go see the tomb of Marie Laveau. I took a candle to leave with me at the tomb since now you can get fined if you write XXX on it, which I totally get, historical preservation and all that. So I got to the tomb, lit my candle, and then I took a bunch of pictures. I went to a nice local restaurant for dinner, then back to my hotel. I decided to document my day on Instagram and uploaded all my photos. 
I made a separate post for the pictures I took at the tomb and added a lot of the history of Marie Laveau in the description. I posted and then I went to take a bath. That's when things got terrifying. I was lying in the bath when I heard footsteps in the bedroom. I thought that maybe it was housekeeping and that I hadn't heard them knock, so I called out that I was in the bathtub and that they should come back later, but no one answered. I heard footsteps again, and then the door closing. I thought it was rude of them not to answer me back, but whatever. I got out and my entire body broke out into goosebumps, like head to toe. It felt like I was standing in a freezer. I wrapped myself up in the bathrobe and walked out into my room. My stomach dropped to the floor. The room was completely ransacked, and the door was standing wide open. I immediately phoned the front desk, and while I was waiting for the police, I got dressed. I started looking around to see what had been stolen, but my laptop, purse, and cell phone were all there. So if this wasn't a burglary, then what was this person looking for? The police arrived and took my statement, and then they left. I cleaned up and got into bed. I decided to go through my notifications and saw that there were nearly 7,000 already on my Instagram. How? It's not like I'm some influencer or a celebrity, so this didn't make any sense. I checked it out, and it was all likes and comments on my Marie Laveau post. But the comments were all the same. Triple X's, nothing else. I was really confused. But then I looked at my photos in the post again. The tomb was covered in thousands of X's, which was completely impossible. I went to my gallery to check the original photos, and all that I could see was basically clean white stone. I went back to my post, and the triple X's were all still there. As I'm staring at it, I see the likes and comments start climbing up again. So I just randomly selected a comment and I responded, asking why they were commenting on this. Almost instantly, they replied, Don't take down this post, or I'll come back. I checked out of the hotel immediately, drove all the way across town to another hotel and checked in there. When I walked into my room, the candle that I had left at the tomb was standing on the bedside table, burning. I checked my phone again, and another 10,000 likes and comments were on my post. More triple X's on the photos of the tomb. Has this happened to anyone else? What should I do? I've disabled notifications. I'm too scared to delete the post. Everyone thinks I'm crazy, but I know what happened. And unless I can convince other people, then this horrible nightmare is never going to end. I'm 29 and I live in Rota, Spain. I grew up here. My house is down by the beach, close to the lagoon. I grew up with all the stories about La Llorona, and I never dared to go outside after dark. But then I grew up and stopped believing in folk stories. I used to wait tables down by the pier, so being outside after dark was pretty unavoidable. I met a ton of really great people over the years, but I'm no longer a waiter there. Now I run the restaurant. I make sure that every person that walks through the door has the best experience possible. Last year during the summer, I met this girl. Let's call her Jess. She was on a working vacation of sorts and wanted someone to show her around town. Since I grew up here, I volunteered. I didn't mind at all, and Jess was also very pretty. She had the most beautiful long black hair as well, which she wore down loose most of the time. She documented everything on Instagram and included me in a lot of her photos calling me the best guide in Spain. Naturally, I started following her on Instagram as well and saw that she had a huge following. She followed me back which I took as an honor at the time, since she only followed about 300 people. With this little arrangement, I started getting more followers too. About a week into her visit here, Jess started asking about the story behind La Llorona. I told her everything that I knew, and then I took her down to the lagoon. 
Once we got there, she had this brilliant idea for me to film her in the lagoon as La Llorona. I thought it was a great idea, since she actually did look quite a lot like the woman that was described in the folklore. The hair is definitely what sold it. She went back to go buy a white dress, and then we went back to the lagoon. The first shot was of Jess walking into the water, and the next shot was supposed to be of her walking back out of the water. She asked if I got the first shot, and I said yes, and then I started recording the second shot. She went back down under the water and never came out. I immediately started looking for her. I called the police. I did everything that I could, but I'm still under some suspicion, I think. Somehow, this weird video of her walking into the water was posted to her Instagram account. In the video, she's crying and saying she doesn't want to do this. This never happened. I never shot that footage. The police have her phone. It's evidence in an unsolved crime. Did someone in the department post this? I mean, am I being framed? What the hell is going on? And ever since this whole nightmare began, I've been hounded by messages from her Instagram followers, accusing me of some really horrible things. Eventually, I just deleted my account. Then, I started getting calls from someone who would just breathe into the phone without saying anything. Then people started saying it was La Llorona who took Jess, or that maybe Jess was actually the real La Llorona. Is this someone's idea of a joke? This is just crazy. Did she stage her own disappearance somehow? I mean, that has to be it. It just has to be. There's no other explanation, right? If you thought these stories were scary, then make sure you watch this next video here if you really want to be scared.